Dr. Bill Adams here, and this is No Spin Live episode 81, believe it or not. And we have a show for you today. We're going to talk about the FDA puts public commentary online for a possible black box warning on breast implants. And finally, Instagram, it's going away in plastic surgery. They're removing all plastic surgery filters. And we've got two great international experts, Dr. Dustin Reed from Austin, Texas. Fellow Texan Dustin. Yep, glad to be throttle. here. Full throttle. And uh, last but not least, Dr. Jason Posner from Boca Raton, Florida. All right, well, let's get into this, guys. There's a lot, lot to talk about. So this first story, uh, actually, Jason, you sent a little excerpt from this as well. But you know, the FDA just put out a request for public commentary on a bunch of new labeling suggestions for breast implants. And one of them includes you know, what's called a black box warning. Uh, it's not really clear exactly what type of implants they're talking about. Dustin, what do you think? Well, I think their spirit is in the right place. The problem is where the rubber meets the road is the patient never sees the box that the implant comes in, as opposed to some other product where they want to warn the patient about something. The patient actually looks at the packaging so they would see this. The black box is supposed to be big and apparent, but patients never look at the box of implants. So it would be one of those things that the plastic surgeon would have to be the person who takes it to the next step and says, look on this box that your implant comes in, there's a warning about X, Y, Z. But otherwise, it's kind of a strange request because don't you agree? Have, has a patient of yours ever seen the box that the implant came in? No, of course not. But I mean, don't you think, do you find it odd though? What, what, what are you going to put on the black box warning? Because we know I mean, you have a new entity at ALCL, but it's never been seen. At least the majority of implants in the United States are not textured implants. So if you find that odd, I mean, what's going to be on the, the black box warning? Yeah. So I don't know what's on the black box warning. I just, the, the idea of a black, black box warning in this situation just makes zero sense because nobody but the operating room personnel sees it. So let's say that, okay, you're going to show it to the patient. Then I guess, I guess ALCL, you could put on textured implants. I, I don't know what past they want to put a warning on there, what they plan to put in it. So I guess I would have to see further. They're trying to create awareness, I guess, but what do you think? You know, you know, as, as Dustin says, this makes no sense. It's not like buying a pack of cigarettes and having somebody uh, saying that, you know, cigarettes cause lung cancer. Um, I think that if we have paperwork that we give the patients with their implants, they get a warranty card, they get some information, I can say, okay, that would be nice to put that in the box with them. But hey, they've already gotten their implants at that point. So, I mean, I think it's more about the consent forms that happen prior to getting your implant, implants. And maybe we need to just give them more information. But listen, we know that the patients have a ton of questions before undergoing any surgery. And maybe some of this may be glossed over a little bit because we discussed it on their initial consult and but they really by the time they got the surgery they probably forgot about this so I think maybe just need to get in the paperwork a little bit that hey with a textured implant there's a one in X uh, risk of this with this particular implant but you know we use all smooth implants at this point so I think the risk of ALCL is minimal of anything you're probably more likely to get hit by a bus driving to my office than you are having any problems with ALCL with the smooth implants that we use and then in terms of BII I think it's something that it's pretty much we're doing a lot of studies with that right now it's still unknown and I think putting that in the paperwork is probably a disservice to the patients at this point until we have more information no question it's a good idea to inform patients let them make an informed decision. Awareness is always good, but I totally agree with you guys that nobody sees the box, including generally the surgeon. The surgeons typically, I actually open my implant boxes myself, but I think I'm in, that's an exception typically for most people. So the person that sees the box is the nurse, and that's it. Top of my priority list would probably be to allow only people trained properly to use breast implants to actually use the devices because that I think to me that's was is much more impactful because most of the things we're talking about even ALCO which we all know about um, but it, it's incredibly rare compared to other things that are much more common and have far more morbidity and, and issues for patients you know so if you're trying to make an impact to me that would be the biggest impact that could be made. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think they're, I just think they're reaching to try to do something. And what they want is that patients be aware of all the possibilities. And so they think like with other products they've dealt with in the past, if you put it in bold lettering on the package, then nobody can miss it. Except this doesn't work in this scenario because nobody sees the package except like you said, the circulating room nurse. I'm sure this is not the last we'll talk about this. I'm sure you guys are going to add some commentary because yet there's 60 days now to, to give the FDA feedback on this. Um, but let's switch gears. We're going to go to social media, social media, Instagram in particular. It's been a big platform for a lot of plastic surgeons, pre post pictures, various things. I mean, we do it in, in plastic surgery channel, but uh, just this past week, Instagram announced that they are removing all filters associated with plastic surgery. And this is something that's been speculated for some time that Instagram is going to phase out plastic surgery on, on the platform. So Jason, what do you I, think? I think someone's, listen, I tell you the people doing these apps are way smarter than we are with any of this stuff. They'll, they won't call it plastic surgery app. They'll call it skin whatever app and they'll have another app to change your appearance i mean they'll put little funny hats on they'll put little funny things they'll squish your nose but it won't be a plastic surgery app it'll be something else so i think that's going to be really hard to police and frankly you know they're saying that people get snapchat dysphoria from looking at these things i mean i think that you know some of the people have a little bit of a weird sense of themselves with this but you know I, I think the, bu the buck stops with us, as we said over the last story. I mean, it's our job to discuss this stuff with the patients. And just the fact that they have funny filters doesn't mean that we're going to make them funny looking. And I, and I want to clarify, I mean, from what I've read and understand, they're not saying they're getting rid of plastic surgery on Instagram. You know, the things that we do showing befores and afters telling in the story, showing operative procedures, educating the patient. They're getting rid of the apps that make it look like someone's had plastic surgery. And the, all of the examples are the ones that they actually make people look weird, but people like that sometimes, I guess. And so they think that plastic surgery could could produce this for them and or give them some kind of dys, dysmorphia where they think that that's normal from an app. But I, I don't think they, their goal is to get rid of plastic surgery on Instagram. No, it's, now, it's, they've yeah. already changed their algorithm to make it very hard for you to promote a practice or to even promote a business on Instagram. They changed that about a month ago. And and so so it's going to be hard to, to use Instagram per se. And if you don't already have a million followers, you're never going to have a million followers doing it doing business or plastic surgery or anything else but what they what they're wanting to ban are those apps that 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 allow you to morph like you've had plastic surgery and i disagree with jason like if they decide they want to do it they can police it because you think they so? know it, they know the in and out of everything that can be used on their app but it's you they know, are, our job. They you, are smarter than us. Have you ever? But have you ever had anyone come in and say, "I want to look like this alien that I made myself look like on yeah. on Snapchat"? And no, I no. Mean, but but I think that it. But you're you're doing you're doing selection bias. The people that come into your office. What they're saying is potentially young women, young people in this day and age. They they can get a distorted view of what's attractive and and that's just not healthy so they're saying we're not gonna let those apps be there yeah I, I think you're right Dustin it is the filters the altering image altering filters but you're also correct that that's just the first of many things that they, they, they're they're gonna phase out plastic surgery you can't grow accounts anymore um, so you know rule the if you're if you're a plastic surgeon don't don't try to don't try to use Instagram to uh, market to your patients because it's not going to be no, not, no longer possible. But no, but know. I still think it's a good tool for showing realistic outcomes. If it's used correctly, I, I still think it's a great tool for that. Showing people what to expect before surgery, what to expect after surgery, what to expect during surgery. I still think it's good for educating patients. But I agree with you. You're you're not going to grow to a giant following they I, I they, are, they are making that 
almost impossible now. I just can't stand the guys with the live video stuff and watch me do every case and watch me like, you know, Dan, pay attention to your patients, you know? Like we're doing a filming tomorrow. BJ's coming to film for us. It's a dedicated filming day for teaching purposes. We're trying to learn, teach people how to use a specific device. I mean, I can see that, but to have a camera crew in my office every day to look at me, look at me, I mean, pay attention to your damn job, you know? The, the live filming, I, I specifically have a problem with because live and you aren't necessarily paying attention. I, have, I, I don't think it's a big deal to take pictures during surgery, yeah. to actually film, as long as the surgeon's not directing or producing it. I, I, think, it's, I think it's fine. But there are a bunch but, of idiots doing that. I mean, I, I, know, I know there are, and they job. have been very successful at it. I'm just saying yeah. they're, they're stopping that, and they're going to... Those, those people will continue to do it, but new people won't be able to grow their accounts doing that. Well, you heard it here. It's probably all going to move to the Plasturity channel. Don't you guys think? <laughs> God, that would be great. So, all right, great stuff. If you want to see more of this, you can see it on theplasticsurgerychannel.com. Mm -hmm.